Is it the market or is it marketing? Look, the math is the answer to what's really happening right now and everyone's situation is a little different. But I wanted to give a little perspective to what's happening in the market and give a real life example in regards to a $350,000 purchase price. So with a $350,000 purchase price, putting 5% down, if we go back in time five, six months ago, rates were around five and a quarter, payments 1739, and then you look up right now and it's all over the news, rates are up and let's just take a seven and a quarter, so 2% higher. I know it seems like a lot, but let's do the math. That's a $400 difference, it's a lot of money. But now, let's look at the opportunity for today's buyer. If we go back in time, what was happening was sellers were dictating the market. Sellers could say, hey, pay me a little bit more and bid over the asking price. Um, we're not gonna pay for those repairs for about three grand or 1% of your purchase price is a good average to use. We're not gonna pay for that. So if I go back six months ago, not only did I have my closing costs on top of my down payment, I also had repair costs that I was gonna have to come out with after I closed on the home. That's cash out of my bank account. I also had the bid over the asking price. Now, 5,000 is pretty conservative. Here in Arizona, we were seeing, I mean, the highest I had was 75,000 over the asking price. You're anywhere from one to 5% over. So conservatively, if I go back in time, your closing costs were $15,500 versus now agents are able to negotiate with the fact that we have a lot more inventory. You now have a choice. You can drive down the street and pick one or two or four houses that you'd like to live in a neighborhood. and decide overnight and figure out what you want to do and come up with a compelling offer. But let's have the seller pay for these closing costs. Let's have the seller pay this $15,500 of mine. Now, if I have an extra $15,000 in my bank account and my payment is $409 higher and I just pull from that bank account for a little while, this divided by 409 is roughly 37 months. Months, that's three years that you're able to get through this $400 payment. Now, I have not heard one market analyst, not one economist say that rates are gonna go up and stay up forever. All of them say it will turn, none of them know when. But somewhere in this three year timeline, we're gonna see a reduction where we can now lower your payment, lower your rate, and remove your mortgage insurance potentially because when you only put the 5% down, you most likely had mortgage insurance. And so now if over that one or two year time frame, you can do that. Now, here's another thing that we can do. Part of your seller concessions can be used to do what's called a rate buy down. Now I know a lot of people have been talking about this. Now look, there's two different ways you can permanent or temporarily buy your interest rate now. Now permanent means, let's say it's $5,000. Same 5,000 on both scenarios. This 5,000 that was permanent, I'm gonna have the lower interest rate right away and I'm gonna have it forever infinity as long as you don't sell or refinance that's the key this is temporary you only have the 5k until it runs out there's this little extra bank account that's set up that has all your money in it your five grand that money every single month is going to go towards your payment now let's say within a couple years let's say six months from now rates drop Let's say nine months from now, rates drop. This money's gone. I've paid the bank that money, they're not giving any of it back. This money is sitting in a little bank account, coming out each month, and some point it's gonna go, oops, stop, I'm gonna refinance. And let's say there's $3,000 left. I get all that $3,000. That comes back to me, and I'm happy about it. 
because I didn't just pay the bank for that permanent buy down. Now there's reasons to do a permanent buy down. One might be to debt qualify. I need a lower payment, but there's some other things that remember this $15,000 over here. If I had an extra $15,000, might I be able to use that to pay down some of my monthly debt, some of my credit cards, some of my loans that will offset this $400 increase in my payment for a little while. This $15,000 can go a long way with some creativity. I find that creativity comes out of chaos. If your clients aren't being explained all of these options that are right now available, because this is a true buyer's market. And even though the rates are higher, the buyers now have options. The buyers can now get some closing cost concessions. Now, will they get it on the house that just hit the market last night? Maybe, maybe not. But could you do the search for homes that have been sitting on the market for two weeks, three weeks? Absolutely. And could you then go through and pull the comps and say, hmm, man, we could probably get, rather than pay the, the 350, why don't we offer uh, 335? Okay, that's $15,000. Well, not, no, let's not. Let's pay the full 350 and get the 15 grand for you to then use that in the best way possible. Maybe it's to just bank the money so that you can pay this extra $400 a month and you feel more comfortable about it. Or maybe you're going to take that and pay off some debts. And now when we refinance you later, you, those debts are gone. The credit cards are gone. The personal loan is gone. And now you've dropped your mortgage payment to a reasonable amount. Maybe it's to that five and a quarter number. Maybe it's even lower. That payment drops, yet you also wiped out all that debt. You're in such a great position. And again, I'm passionate about other people's money, your money, growing your wealth. And this is one tool, and this is a great time to be looking at doing that. How do we grow wealth? Now, I'll leave you with this. Imagine, houses have stabilized now. We've been at about 20,000 inventory for a couple months now. We're pretty stable. We're gonna go this way through the winter. Rates aren't going that much higher per all the experts. They'll come down at some point in time, but what is going to happen when they come down? You have the people that have said, nah, I'm gonna wait for the rates to drop. You have the normal people that are just gonna come out of their leases. You've got people that are gonna move to town at that time, just perfect timing for them when the rates do drop. Well, when that happens, now you're going back into multiple offers. Maybe you have to bid over. You won't have as much leverage to ask for these seller credits. You're going to have this kind of frenzy going. They said that 26% of people that bought during COVID during the frenzy when rates were really low are dissatisfied and resent their purchase because they settled. Right now, you don't have to settle. Right now, you can be out looking for the house you want, in the location you want, with the size yard that you want, in the pool, in the RV gate, whatever you want. And you don't have to be in a rush to get it. But then you work with a professional real estate agent that can crunch those numbers and say, I can get this covered for you. Don't worry about it. Let's get with Greg and his team and let them run the math because the math is going to help you get the path to home ownership and building wealth right now. Reach out with your specific scenario. I'll run the numbers at whatever price point you want. I want to make sure you're making the best decision and not just saying no. The media says to wait. Remember, is it marketing or is it really the market? Reach out to a professional today.